What's up, my beautiful people? This is Kristen Peoples coming to you with BossOfCulture.org, coming to you with a very serious topic. It is a very personal topic, and my intention is that this topic will change your life. Again, this channel is all about things that I've experienced that I'm hoping to have been a sacrificial lamb, so, lamb, so to speak, that you don't have to experience some of the things that's out there. Point blank period. You know, I'm here. I am here for you. That is the reason why I believe I was put on this earth is that um, I'm a strong person and that I've been through a lot, but I'm also resilient. And I honestly have gifts and my talents to share with you. And um, I hope that you're open and receptive to what I'm going to share today. Just a disclaimer up front. I'm not judging anyone. If you are in barking upon or if you are engaging in activities that allow you to escape reality knowing that you are abusing yourself in the process I'm not judging you this is a no judgment zone so that I ask I ask that you keep the comments very respectful in this video because this is a very serious topic and I take it very seriously and I take anyone that's going through this, I take your healing very seriously. So with that said, I'm going to light this incense and today I have open roads and my intention with lighting this incense is that any blockages that are in your life hindering you from being your highest self and living to your highest potential that those roadblocks be removed right now. So opening roads is what we're doing right now. We are releasing any and everything that does not serve us. And we are preparing a way for everything that does. Because when we have things in our way, when we have baggage that needs to be unpacked, it takes up precious space in our lives to receive the abundance that is in store for us. There, there truly are blessings that are in store for us. We don't see them because we're making room for all the wrong things. So if you are struggling today with an addiction, with drugs, with alcohol, with sex, with shopping, everyone has a vice. I personally struggle with drinking when I was subjected to being a target of workplace abuse and bullying within my corporate career of over 20 years. If you know me and you know my story, uh, you know that I was a target for many years, 10 years of my 20 year career, 10 years towards the end of my career. And that is what ultimately led me to my purpose in life. So um, it was a blessing and a curse at the same time. But I invite you to please just go to my video. As you can see, I'll, when you look at the video, you'll see that I'm not the person I am even today. As um, I was a very broken person. Um, the abuse I endured, it messed with my self-esteem. It just messed with me as a person. It affected a lot of my relationships it affected my health and I was looking for an escape. So I always drank. I always drank since, you know, I don't know, before before I was supposed to be anyway. And um, it wasn't a problem. It never was a problem. It never became a problem until I looked to it as an escape. I remember coming home from work one day it was May of 2015, May 1st of 2015 to be exact. I went to work that day and I was subjected to a manager who was so harsh, so harsh and so callous in her ways. She and other managers that decided to mob me, HR included within that department, um, made my life a living hell. So. Being the strong person that I was, I said, hey, I'm not going to let these people bother me. I'm going to come home and have a glass of wine. That's how I'm going to unwind. That is how I am going to escape the day. But in May of 2015, this became a problem for me because 
that occasional coming home and having wine turned into one glass, turned into two, and eventually turned into a bottle or two. Take your pick, the big boy or the small one. But it started with the abuse. This is nothing that I'm, a pr I'm proud of sharing. Um, actually, I'll take that back. I am proud that I'm sharing this with you because I am on the other side of that. But this was something that took over my life because it became a pattern. It became a pattern in such a way that every single day was almost, it, it, I was being abused every day. So every day there was a meeting or something that was said. But May 1st, 2015 was different. When I went to work that day, this manager had been trying to catch up with me. She wanted to meet with me. She wanted to meet with me so bad. And I didn't want to meet with her. So I was doing everything I could to avoid her. I was booking conference rooms on my calendar. I would say meeting here, but it would be a meeting for me to get a meeting for me to get work done because I knew that if I was at my desk, she would walk up to me, say something offensive, say something um, racist, say something just to push my button so that I could lose it and eventually lose my job. So I knew what she was doing and I was trying to avoid that as much as possible. And that's where I think my panic attacks were kind of coming into play because they were trying to protect me in such a way that whenever one of the managers would try to press my buttons, I would get so upset and there would be fear that would be, be building up, right? Because the fear of, oh my gosh, is today the day I'm going to lose my job? What am I going to do? So I had those thoughts going in my head. And at the same time, my body was protecting me subconsciously saying, hey, do not react to these people because if you do, you're going to give them what they want. They want you to react so that they can fire you. So I would escape. And on that day, I went home. I remember having a panic attack when that woman called me into a conference room. And she and another manager from another department, but I had to interface with her. They had a list of all the ugly things that you could say about someone. And she pulled out this list and she was just going down this list. Your, your face looked like this in a meeting and your tone was this. And it was just nothing to do with my job. It was, you personally are a problem. It was some of the ugliest things. And when people start saying ugly things to me, and this is just me in general, I shut down. I just, I shut it out. It just starts sounding like wah, 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 wah. Because I already know that if I allow that energy to continue to come into my spirit, I can react in ways that are beyond me. So I purposely shut it out. And again, my body kicked in. I had a panic attack and that panic attack, thank God, came right on time and I was able to go home. But I went home to something dangerous that day. It was that glass of wine that day when I went home as I was thinking about the ugly things that that woman said to me and the other manager and her input on that list. And as I poured that glass of Chardonnay and it was ice cold and it was perfect and it was so healing going down at that time, I said, hey, without knowing subconsciously, I was saying, damn, this feels good. Damn, I can handle this. I was looking for a way to deal with this crap day in and day out. And now I have a way. I could just come home and have a couple glasses of wine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Until it became a problem. Because, like I said, things were happening every single day at work. And so wine became a crutch for me. Instead of me being able to go to my friends and family, which I did at, at one time at the beginning of all this, I but then I started feeling like I was a burden to people, right? I would be at the holidays, you know. Um, I have judges in my family and I'd be asking, hey, is it legal? I have attorneys in my family. I'd be asking, hey, is it legal for this or is it legal for that? I'd be consumed with what was going on at work that I couldn't even freaking enjoy my holiday. I couldn't enjoy my family because I was always constantly thinking about the abuse I had to endure Monday through Friday. And God, if you have lived it, you understand the frustration, the fear 
If you've ever been a, a target of workplace abuse and bullying, please comment below. I want to know your experience because I know you feel me right now while you're watching this video. But what I don't want you to do is get caught up. Because once I got caught up, it became too much. It became too much to the point that it started affecting my family. That instead of me going to my husband or going to my girlfriend because I didn't want to bug anyone with my problems, right? I wanted to continue to be the bubbly person that I was. I was always a positive person, but I was changing. I was going through um, this metamorphosis of something that I did not like what I was becoming. I hated who I was becoming deep down inside, right? Because now, and this is how you know you have a problem, now I'm sneaking and I'm doing it. It's one thing when you're out in the open and you're like, hey, it's Friday night. You want to want to meet me for a drink, that type of thing. No, it became, hmm, how can I hide this? Because now I know that this is becoming too much. This seemingly innocent thing that I've always done. Whenever I celebrated, had a glass of wine or two, no problem. Whenever things were down, someone died in the family, have, you know, a couple drinks, you know, you and the family are drinking, you know, or friends, you lost a friend, a loved one, you know, and it's just things that people do. It's normal, right? It's normal to drink. But to drink because you're being abused at work, that's when it became a problem because it shifted from me just relaxing it shifted from me just trying to what started off was i'm escaping so i can i had a hard day so i can come home and have a glass of wine no it shifted and it became a huge problem it not only became a problem in you know my relationships with um with my family it also became a problem you know it started leading to other health problems you know, it opens up a whole can of worms. See, the thing about, and then there's other drugs, right? Then there's, you know, there's the, there's pills. And it got to the point where I did have to pop a pill just to go to work. Because at the, now at this point, I decided to seek after my doctors, um, going to my PCP a few times for anxiety attacks. Straight, coming straight from work because my blood pressure would be boiling because of the abuse I endured that day. And getting an emergency appointment, my doctor was just furious with how I was being treated at work. And he was like, why are you still there? But like many of you, you're still there because, well, who's going to pay my bills? It's easy for my doctor to tell me, why are you still there? But, hey, I've been here for 20 years and the last 10 have been hell. And where am I going to go? I have seniority. I have this. You, you find all these excuses as to why you can't move and you just become paralyzed. So he called and, and I and I shared with my doctor, I said, hey, I'm starting to drink too much. I, I think it's becoming a problem for me. You know, I, I shared that information with him. And he said, you know, that is the cheapest drug. That is the cheapest drug. And thankfully, I was able to seek a psychiatrist and a psychologist because you need someone to talk to when you're trying to understand why people would abuse you in such a way when all you want to do is go to work. And all you want to do is make your contributions at work so that you can con contribute, contribute at home. That's all I wanted to do. That is all I wanted to do. Like anyone, does anyone deserve to be treated any differently because of what they want? Everybody wants the same thing. So I just never understood. I would always say I would never treat people like this if I was in this position. Why are they treating me like this? But I never wanted them, them to see me sweat and I never wanted them to see me cry. But God knows I cried on my way there every morning and I will come home and drink at night. So it's so funny. Um, I One of my clients, because I sell real estate now, which I totally love because I can help people in a way and more ways than just showing them homes. I just help them in all kinds of ways and decision processes and the way they think. And, you know, a lot of times you'd be surprised people think negatively of themselves and they feel like they can't afford a home. And, and I just love the, the way that I can explain to them like, yeah, you can, let's crunch the numbers. Let's look at it like this. And just the way I'm able to share my gifts and talents. And, and not only with that, also with my coaching business, where I'm, where I'm able to open the world up to people where they always saw themselves small and stuck. I feel like so free now that I can 
show people that there is a bigger plan out there for them, whether it be a new house, you know, or whether it be just them looking within to find the greatness within. And that's what this channel is all about. So I wanted you guys to understand my struggles in knowing that I'm not perfect. I may stand before you right now smiling and and in good health and positive and um and all that I do, my outlook and the way I try to live, the way I try to eat, the way I um communicate with others, the way I share and spread love with others and, and to others. So it's a give and take thing. So I put whatever I put out, you guys, it's coming back. And so I'm a big believer in karma and I needed to get past how I was being treated and knowing that God saw everything that was going on and that these people will be dealt with. And it's none of my business what happens to them. But all I do know is that it's my responsibility to forgive, which is very hard for me to do. Um, once you step on my toes, I am a Scorpio. I may sting you on the way out. I may sting you not even know I stinged you. I stung you. Um, but I some way, somehow let you feel it before I leave the door. I'll just put it to you like that. Nothing. I, and and, and let, me, let me put this out there too. <laughs> I don't do anything to hurt anyone. I mind my own business. But when you mess with me, I do know how to protect myself. And that's what I try to teach you on this channel is that people can be cruel and they can be mean. But you protect yourself in the way that you um, treat yourself, the way you love on yourself, and the way you respect yourself. And what I was doing during that time was I was allowing the conditioning of the hatred and the mistreatment to manifest within me in a way that I would come home and abuse myself. When people think of self-harm, they think of cutting, they think of, you know, um, just doing these horrible things to yourself in, in abusive ways. But self-harm is drugs, alcohol, you know, and I had to learn to love myself again because my self-esteem was so shot by the time it was all over. I totally, when I talk about the Phoenix Rising, I literally had to destroy myself to build myself back up, if that makes any sense. I literally had to go down deep to the ashes and just really just go deep and dark before I saw the light. And so when I look in these forums on these Facebook groups and I, you know, I hear people complaining and, you know, um, just venting, that's fine. But if that's where it stops, then you're wasting your time. These people are not going to stop doing what they're doing because you went on Facebook and you vented to someone. Has anyone ever experienced this or has anyone ever experienced that? And then you go to work the next day and just endure it. I did that. It doesn't work. So if you're watching this video and you're on Facebook, on these Facebook groups, and you're complaining and you're not getting involved with Dawa, um, if you're not getting involved with, you know, um, getting the mental help that you need, if you're self-harming every day, like I was, and all these things I'm speaking from my own experiences. So again, I'm not judging anyone. But if you're doing all these things that are only harming yourself then what are you truly doing are they winning because i see complaining is just complaining but and there needs to be some action behind your complaining vent get it out yeah do that punch a pillow scream but do something about it and don't just stay there and lay down and take it there are several videos on this channel that I talk about from documentation to getting an employment, an employment attorney to going within, to taking care of yourself, to meditating. There are videos, there is video after video on this channel. Every single thing I was looking for when I was going through it, I have on my spirit to share with you and I put it on a video for you to say, dang, I, yep, I know exactly what she's talking about. I should be doing that. 
And I do all this because I don't want you going through what I went through. So if you are struggling with an addiction due to workplace bullying abuse, or whether you've been abused, period, in life, and you're looking for that escape, know that you are not escaping what you're going through. You see, you look at a person that once I started seeing a therapist and I was still in that same situation, because you got to remember, you guys, my environment never changed. The secret to getting better is an environment change because what I started doing was I was, my doctor told me, my doctor at the time, she told me, okay, how long does it take you to get to work? 30 minutes. Take a half a pill before you get to work to just kind of calm your nerves down, deal with the anxiety before you get to work. And then take another, the other half when you get there. Then I'd come home, have a couple glasses of wine or two or three or four. And then I'd start the next day over again. It was a nightmare. I was not being good to myself. And I hope that you take heed, that you truly take heed in watching this video. Because the merry-go-round does not stop just because another song comes on. The merry-go-round continues as long as you are in that same environment. And I am not telling you to quit. I'm not telling you to up and walk away from your family if it's a family uh, situation. I mean, if it's a domestic violence situation and you need to get your kids out of there or whatever, yeah, by all means, go someplace self right, safe right away. But if you are in a workplace abusive situation like I was for several years, start making plans to go someplace else. You can still get that attorney. You can still reach out to EEOC while you're doing all this. You can still be documenting. You can still be... Again, reach out to an employment attorney to find out what your rights are and start protecting yourself. But don't let these people get away with what they're doing by you not loving on you. Because the only person you're hurting is you. And the only people you're hurting are the people that love you the most. So ho hopefully my open and honest talk with you today um, will open your eyes as to what drugs and alcohol can do to you and your family because i tell you that out that alcohol is a sneaky bitch she is not your friend she'll make you think that she's got your back and then before you know it you're over your head so while you're relaxing and unwinding that's fine but when you begin using it as a crutch like i did it can turn real ugly real quick. And this is just the beginning of my story, you guys. I am in the process of writing a book. So you'll know every single dark moment I have when I do publish my book. So hopefully you will support me in that way. I'm here to support you in every way possible. Visit me at www.bossupculture.org. Again, visit me at www.bossupculture.org. And... um. We have coaching there for you. We have resources. We have a whole resource page. DAWA, the, the Dignity at Work Act, that information is there for you. We have a whole movement across the country, you guys, working tirelessly to make this workplace abuse illegal. So um, don't just talk about it. Be about it. You know, um, one thing I have learned is I have very little tolerance and patience for people that complain and don't do anything about it. And that just goes with anything. You know, I look at what's going on in the world today. And if you're not getting involved in making positive change, then shut up. You know, I don't want to hear about you complaining about how your boss treated you today if you're not doing anything about it. I don't want to hear you talk about police brutality if you're not standing up, if you're not going to your local meetings, finding out who your local legislators are and getting involved. Stop complaining. Start doing. That is, you're on this earth to do something big and great. So stop diminishing yourself. Stop being quiet because you feel like, you know, being quiet is what is, is what's up. No, it's not. Those days are gone. Those days of being in a box are gone. Those days of not speaking up for yourself and others. When you see things are going wrong, you see that a coworker is being mistreated and you're just standing back because you want to save your job only for them to maybe come for you and or come for someone else later on. That's not cool. So enough of my rant. Until next time, 
I hope this video has been helpful. If, if you know of anyone who could use this message, please share it. I'm Kristen Peoples. And until next time, love you and stay positive, okay? Talk to you. Bye.